If you haven't done it before, the hollow body might not look that challenging or cool, especially compared to other more dynamic abdominal exercises. Don't let looks deceive you though, because this is one of the best core exercises if, if you get the technique right. The hollow body activates all four abdominal muscle groups, starting from the surface area, where we have our favorite obvious abdominal muscles, the external obliques, and the rectus abdominus, aka six pack, actually it's an eight pack if you have really low fat percentages, and moving deeper, where the not so popular internal obliques and transversus abdominals lie. These deeper layers are not so popular and they don't get the credit they deserve because they're not visible to the naked eye. What most people don't know though is that they play the biggest role when it comes to improving your physique. One of the main functions of the internal obliques and the TVA is to hold your abdominal organs and lower back stable during dynamic movements such as lifting and throwing heavy stuff or running fast. Each time you perform such activities, the viscera are reflexively pulled inward. Give it a try and you'll see that you can't sprint properly on a loose belly. In simple words, our TVA and our internal obliques function like a natural corset. The more trained these muscles are, the more your stomach will look flatter. So even though these abdominal muscles are not directly visible, they do affect how your body looks. And the hollow body? The hollow body is one of the best exercises to train these two abdominal muscles. As you can see here, your rectus abdominis, meaning your six pack or eight pack, call it whatever you want, is more relaxed since the TVA and the internal obliques are doing most of the work. Don't worry though, once your corset muscles reach a good level of strength, you can learn to include your favorite rectus abdominis more in the game through hollow body advanced variations. A lot of people do abdominal exercises without really feeling the abs doing the work, and they end up doing a ton of reps without any results. This happens mainly due to bad technique that results from the hip flexors doing most of the work instead of your abdominals. And overactive hip flexors combined with weak abs is the perfect recipe for lower back pain. The hollow body is the first abdominal exercise I teach people to do in my personal training practice because it is a great exercise to learn how to properly and safely activate your core, a skill that can carry over to most abdominal exercises later on. Lay flat on the floor with your hands on your sides. Most people lift their head and upper back during the hollow body, but I consider this wrong, especially for beginners, because it doesn't allow you to focus on proper muscle activation. Allowing your head and upper back to rest on the floor might take some tension off the rectus abdominis, but it allows you to focus all your mind to muscle connection where it should be, the internal obliques and the TVA. Bring your legs up at a 90 degree angle and feel your lower back flattening on the floor as your pelvis rotates backwards. Now push your lower back into the floor and tighten your rectus abdominis. This ensures that your whole core is braced from the deeper layers all the way to the outer. Try this position for 30 seconds and press hard enough against the floor as if you're trying to leave an imprint of your lower back on it. Your whole core area should be burning up after 10 or 15 seconds. Palpating your abs with your fingers helps give you some feedback that you're properly bracing your core. Once you get comfortable with this position, try lowering your legs slowly down to a point where you can maintain the pressure of your lower back against the floor. A few inches can be enough since your lower back will be eager to jump off the ground if you go too low too sudden. Once you can find an angle that is challenging enough, stay there for 30 seconds again. You'll know you find the right angle when you feel your core tremoring. If you feel you're losing pressure from the floor, this can also translate into lower back pain, lift your legs an inch or two upwards again. As you get better at it, your goal is to eventually lower your legs until they are parallel to the ground with your toes pointing forward. To ensure that you're doing the exercise right, place a belt or a band beneath your lower back, just beneath the navel, and have a friend pull it as you're doing the exercise. The belt or the band should remain pinned during the whole set if you're doing the exercise correctly. Beginners and especially beginners with lower doses who struggle with keeping their lower back flat on the ground can practice the following tip. Extend your arms next to your body and push the floor with your fingers as if you want to push your body away from your feet. This will help you activate your core better and it will keep your pelvis rotated posteriorly with your lower back flat on the ground. 
Once you can hold a full hollow body position for 30 seconds, you can use this advanced variation to make the exercise more challenging and to also increase rectus abdominis activation. To perform this variation properly, you want to lift the upper back portion of your spine while your lower back remains pinned down on the floor. As you can see, the rectus abdominis is also firing up now. Back here at the bodyweight muscle base again and to close today's video, I wanted to remind you that abs are mainly made in the kitchen. So remember that if your diet sucks, no matter what exercise you do, you won't see a big difference when it comes to your six pack. For abdominal training, make sure you're doing the right exercises. The hollow body is definitely one of the best ones you can do. And before I close this video, I wanted to ask you if you're interested in um, how I go with bulking up for the winter, leaning down for the summer, my, um, my approach training wise and diet wise, I could make maybe uh, a video focused on that. This year I gained about two kilos, I think that's five pounds of lean mass, which is pretty good for uh, someone who's advanced and has been training for years like me. I could share um, my approach to all that and until next time, keep on training.